Crystal Disk Mark is likely the most popular benchmarking software you can find for storage. It's easy to use for beginners, but also has some depth, has tools that power users like as well. With this software, you can test the health and the speed of pretty much any device you have connected to your PC. Solid state drives, hard drives, SD cards, thumb drives, literally anything. So let's check it out. So the first thing you're gonna need is a desk and make sure your computer is on top of that desk, most important. So go to your favorite browser and head to crystalmark.info. You want crystal disk mark, not crystal disk info. Crystal disk info can be handy when used in conjunction with crystal disk mark, but any information that I personally am curious about can be read from HW info. But if you want some more comprehensive diagnostics of your storage, this is a pretty handy tool for that. But anyways, click on the latest version of Crystal Disk Mark and click on that download button. Here you will get two options, the boring standard edition, or if you have any class at all, the Shizoku edition. So click on the appropriate installer. You can use this one for Windows Vista or later. And once you have that installed, you can go ahead and launch it. So we're gonna start with the quick and dirty. So if you're testing an NVMe drive, just go ahead and on this drop down here and set it to NVMe SSD. Otherwise, just leave it as it is. Make sure you have the right drive selected. Funny thing I noticed about recently, it was the different drives. If you turn them sideways, they have these whimsical little faces. And every time I look at them now, that's what I see. I'm gonna be using the D drive. And an important note here is to make sure you have the reasonable amount of space left. At minimum, you want to have enough to allow tests to write freely to the drive. So if we're just doing the one gigabyte test, that's what you need. But ideally, you want to have at least 10% of the drive free. And that's a bonus to that is that you won't get any unnecessary wear to your flash storage. From there, the only thing you may want to change is this number here. That's the test count. And just go ahead and turn that to one. We're going to leave it at one gigabyte right here. Now hit this all button and let the test run. All right, so now we get the results for the test. So what do they actually mean? So obviously here we have the read and write columns. So this first row is sequential one megabyte, Q depth of eight and one thread. This is typically going to be your highest score. This is the one they put on the box. This is the pretty numbers. For example, the drive I am testing is a 500 gigabyte WD Black SN 750, which is a Gen 3 PCIe SSD with advertised sequential read write speeds of up to 3,430 megabytes per second and 2,600 megabytes per second, respectively. And you can see at least in the write speeds, they are beating that, but not in the read speeds, but it's close enough. So that's fine. So compare those results to what your manufacturer has set out. And as long as they're close to that, there's nothing to worry about. But if they're pretty far off, at least from that first row, there might be an issue with the drive, especially if it's new. The second row is a sequential 128 kilobyte, a Q depth of 32 and one thread. And this is supposed to be closer to what the real world actual maximum is. And the other one's more of a theoretical one. Uh, but as you can see here, it's very close to what the first one was anyways. But as you stress the drive more, you'll notice these numbers might go down faster than the original first test, that one megabyte test. The third row is random four kilobyte chunks, Q depth of 32 and 16 threads. So this is gonna be your maximum random performance of the drive. Random is where you'll see the spinning hard drives suffer. The seek times take a huge toll on the speed. And that's why there's a huge advantage with flash storage over traditional hard drives. The fourth and final row is the random 4K chunks, one Q depth and one thread. This is gonna represent the close, at least close to the minimum performance of the drive. And you can see here, it's nowhere near the numbers that the other ones have gotten. So that's the basics. If that's all you want, you can leave it there. You can take the results from the test, compare it to what other people have online, compare it to what the manufacturer has set up for your drive to be. And as long as they're close to that, then there's nothing really to worry about. And if the results are drastically different from what the manufacturer has set, maybe you should consider getting an RMA. So if that's all you wanted to know, thanks for watching. Hit that like button. I really appreciate it. But if you want to know a little bit more, we're going to dip into the weeds just a little bit. So before we get into the different pre-made settings, I want to quickly go over the parameters and what they mean. So the test number, obviously this test count, all it's going to be is how many times it's going to run through the test. So if you were to hit it for five, it's going to repeat that test five times and give you the average number over those five tests, the test size. So that's essentially what it's going to be reading it and writing. I recommend if you actually want a better understanding of your drive to do at least say 32 gigabytes, it's going to take longer. 
but not a huge deal, but we'll leave that at one. Go for 32 gigs and try that out. And the reason why you want to go with the higher ones, especially when it comes to NVMe SSDs or even just SSDs in, and in general, is because the shorter tests don't really stress the DRAM and doesn't represent what the drive might be like over the long period with bigger file sizes as that DRAM gets saturated. Even with one pass with a 32 gig test, you can see that the write speeds drop as well as the random read speeds. So read and write, I already went through that. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna go over here to settings and settings. In this first row, you have the type that's sequential versus random. So sequential is simply put, is a read write operation that executes in a series of blocks, like when copying a large video file. Whereas random is as it suggests, the drive must seek and execute on different parts of the drive randomly. Hard drives have a seek time of around 10 milliseconds, where solid state drives have a seek time of around 0.1 milliseconds, and that's what leads to the substantial performance gain. So practically, you'll notice those random performances when, say, booting up your PC or updating an operating system. The block size is simply the size of each section of bits or bytes being read or written. So many small blocks are usually slower to read than few large blocks. So for example, a four kilobyte is going to be harder to read than the one megabyte or even higher than that. Q depth is the number of pending transactions to the drive. For SATA, 32 is the highest Q depth, while NVMe bumps the bar up just a smidge at 65,000. But before you get too excited, a personal PC only has a Q depth typically of one to four at any given time. Even servers and NAS, they only go up to about 32, and that's on really heavy loads. So we're not seeing that huge queue depth being taken advantage of yet. And threads is pretty simple. It's just processes. How many processes are trying to access the drive at one, get one given time? And it's not a multiplier. It really depends on the drive and how much throughput it can have. It's not going to double the speed just by doubling the amount of threads. It doesn't work like that. So to put it in layman's term, I found this analogy on a forum and essentially went like this. You have people and each person has a list of requests of information. The number of people are the threads and their lists are the queue depth and the block size is which each request on that list is. For example, if we had a 4K size, let's say a queue depth of four and say, let's go eight threads, for example. So that means they have eight people, threads, each of them has a list of four requests, Q depth of four, with each request asking for four kilobytes of data. That helped me understand it a little better. So these settings all here can be customized to your liking. I can't go through every specific situation and why you might want to change them, but they're there if there's any specific thing that you wanted to do. For example, say you were setting up a, a server, you would definitely want to use a higher Q depth because it's going, going to take advantage of that. So anyways, we're not going to touch too much in here except for these measure time and interval time. Measure time, I don't know exactly what that means. I've tried to find the answer to that. If you know what it is, please let me know. I don't know exactly what that means, but interval time is simply in between each test. It gives you that five seconds buffer in between them, and that's gonna let the DRAM uh, just give it a break so that your performance is not gonna take a huge hit. So if you wanna actually see what this can do, your drive and see push to the limits, you wanna turn down that interval time, definitely. So go over here to profile, and these are where you wanna see the real world performance specifically. But peak performance, let's look at that first. So if you go to peak performance, we have similar here, this is like we had before, that sequential one megabyte, Q depth of eight and one thread. This one, bumping it up with a Q depth of 32, threads 16, and here we have the input output operations per second and with a Q depth of 32 and 16 again. And this is the latency of Q depth of 32 and threads 16. So when these get read, if I were just to click on one of these, the, the results in here is not going to be megabytes per second. That's gonna be the IOPS, the input output operations per second number. So when you actually do this test, you're gonna see that it's gonna have a huge number. Look at that. Uh, what? How much is that? Uh, 462,000, that's not megabytes per second. That is the, like I said, input output operations per second. And this is the latency, 11, hundred microseconds. So this profile is for very heavy workloads. Definitely not gonna be useful for people just using a PC at home. So go over to here, profile, and click on real world performance. And this one's essentially the same as we had before with that last one at peak performance, except that instead, all of these are gonna be at one queue and the thread count of one as well. So you're gonna see the performance is much lower. And again, like we had in the previous one, we have the IOPS 
and the latency. So you can tinker around with that if you want as well to see what a more modest performance would be like. And of course in here, if you wanna change these, this read write, that's what the default is. It's gonna test the read and the write of the drives. But if you just click on read, it will only test the read column. And also if you click on write, obviously, it'll just test the write column. That's it. Last and certainly not least is the theme of the Shizoku edition comes with these beautiful, beautiful themes that you can change to your pleasure and your liking and enjoyment. Anyways, I hope this video has been helpful. Definitely use this program when you first get a drive. It gives you a nice snapshot to see if the drive is working properly, see what kind of speeds are there. And in the future, if you feel like you're having any issues with it, make sure you save that for later. And you can compare it to your previous testings to see if the drive has changed at all. So yeah, let me know how it goes with you. If there's any corrections that need to be made in this video, please let me know. This channel is called Techie Literate for a reason and I am learning as I go and trying to share this information with you. The reason why I made this video is because when I was researching how to use this software, I came across the video, first video I found was no offense to the person, but terrible. It was like he was just learning it for the first time, just trying it out. So I hope this has been helpful, like I said. And uh, yeah, my name is Nick. This has been Tech Literate. Have a good one.